Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to talk about something that I think is both very fun and, believe it or not, actually pretty useful, which is not very common on this channel. Uh, we're going to talk about programming to an interface or writing functions with interfaces in mind. And we'll do that by exploring this map function. So right now, it's not written with an interface in mind. It's written only with a single data type in mind, which is arrays. So we can see that we've got a few issues here. We are, no matter what, always creating a new array and returning a new array. So even if we had a data type that allowed for this for in loop and for square bracket uh, access, we would not get back a same, another instance of that data type once we transformed it with map. We'd get back an array. Now we might want that, but we're going to say in this case we don't. We actually want to get back it's the instance of that data type that we gave it. So we're going to do this by transforming this map into one that supports this mappable interface, which would mean that any data type implementing that interface would work inside of map. There's a few different ways of doing this, and if you've seen the parametric polymorphism and ad hoc polymorphism videos that I made, you're probably thinking of a few of them already. Uh, so one solution you could do is something like array.isArray, and then having implementation for that. Uh, and then below it, you could have something like uh, my data type dot is my data type and then have an implementation for that uh, but that's going to involve having to constantly extend the source code for your helper functions which is generally not a very scalable pattern and it can lead to uh, backwards compatibility issues and just general regressions and a lot of upkeep that you just don't want to have to do if instead you say as long as your data type implements a particular interface it will work with this map, with this function, uh, then it'll be you avoid the need to have to support or have to predict the future correctly. So let's just run this. First of all, it works the way we expect. We get back an empty array if we give it an empty array, and we get back a transformed array if we give it a populated array, which we can see here on lines 25 and 26. So let's nuke this completely. I've already prepared a, a definition of map that implements this interface or is written with this interface in mind just so that you don't have to watch me type all this out but we will take a minute to walk through it so that we understand what's going on. I've replaced the for in loop with a recursive function just so that we don't have to worry about how to iterate through the collection. Uh, instead we'll be using head and tail which actually makes iteration fairly easy because we can separate the first element from the rest of it and then continue recursing until we run out of the rest of the elements. So we've got this little check at first. If the collection is empty, then we'll just return a new empty instance of that collection. And so right away we see a new, one of those methods that we need to support, which is of. And that will just give us back an empty instance of the collection that we passed in. Otherwise, we'll kick off the recursion. So we call transform, give it the transformation function, give it the first element, and give it the rest of the elements. If we look at the definition of head and tail, they're simply little helpers that are allowing us to call with a more comfortable, a more ergonomic uh, call signature. So this should be the exact same thing. I just think that this feels a bit more natural and I prefer writing it that way. So that's why I wrote these. Uh, and so up here, I guess I should walk through transform as well. If there are no more elements left in the tail, we just transform the first element and give it back. Otherwise, we'll create a new instance of the collection that we passed in, and the only value in it is the transformed head, which we know exists because we made sure that it exists down here. Then if we were to say this line in English, we would say that the transformation of the entire collection is the transformation of the head, which is the new instance, concatenated with the transformation of the rest of the array, or collection, <laughs> I should say. And so hopefully that makes sense. That's not specifically what this video is about. I have videos about recursion and these sorts of things uh, if you want to learn more about those. But what we're trying to do now is fix this problem. 
where if I run this, it all blows up because array does not implement of and head and tail. So let's fix that. If we do, again, don't do this. <laughs> uh, do not modify the built-in prototypes directly, but since this is an example, uh, I'm going to do it anyway. The way you'd probably want to do this is create something like my array and then uh, extend the built-in data types and then you would use my array in place of array. But it's not, again, not what this video is about, so we'll just modify it directly. We can do the same kind of thing with head. We'll just create a method on the array.prototype, but we're going to kick it off with an, a check. We know that length is there, it's part of the interface. So if there are no elements in this collection, then we will throw a new error. Uh, you could choose not to do this. I'm choosing to throw a new error instead of returning some sort of default behavior, just because I think errors are a bit more useful. It allows you to write more carefully uh, instead of blindly passing functions around and data types through them. Uh, and if we have a first element, then we can return it. Now, notable, I can see this being a potential question. We know we can use the square brackets here because we know that we're working with arrays. So that's why we know that we can access it by the index. We can do almost the exact same thing for tail. Tail, not tile. Except instead of returning the first element, we want to return everything except for the first element. So now arrays implement the entire interface. We've added head, we've added tail, and we've added of. So the entire interface has been satisfied, which should mean that this will work, and it does. So we pass in our empty array, we get back a new empty array. We pass in nums, which is populated, and we get back a transformed nums. Now just to make sure, let's log out nums and make sure that I've used the correct slice versus splice, because I do have a tendency to forget which is which. We're good there, the first log there shows that nums has not been transformed. So everything's still working as we want it to. Now, where this might be useful, uh, I recently used this at work when we were writing some wrappers for React components. Uh, it's really helpful to be able to say, I don't know what type of component we are going to be passing into this wrapper in the future, but as long as it implements this handful of methods, as long as it supports this interface, then this wrapper will work. Uh, and wrappers are, particularly useful in something like React because you often want to standardize across your entire UI. And so keeping this sort of pattern in mind has been very useful there. Also, if you're doing something like creating decorators in Python, establishing an interface can be useful. Uh, though I recently wrote one where if I said, as long as you inherit from this base class, you'll have all the methods that you need. Uh, which means it's very easy for future developers to look at that and say, does my uh, class inherit from this other class? If it does, then I can use this decorator. Things like that are very useful. Or, of course, the actual example we used in this uh, video, which was modifying a utility function so that it can support unforeseen future use cases and data types. So I hope this is interesting to you, or at least half as interesting as it is to me. If you learned something, let me know. If you enjoyed it, definitely let me know. And if you didn't, still let me know. Just be nice about it. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.